he makes heaven leap like a calf. The voice of the Lord strikes. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The voice of the Lord twists the oak. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits in throne over the flood. The Lord gives strength to his people. In New Testament reading is First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse one to eleven. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to new idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, because and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are di different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the Manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one day is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gift of the healing by the one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between speak to another speaking in different kind of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines the lord be with you
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, according to Luke chapter 3, the beginning at verse 15. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His window in fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in the prison. When all the people were being baptised, Jesus was baptised too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me say. Heaven was open, and the Holy 
Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. Amazing. Spirit of God came upon Jesus. And so we need to focus on that the baptism is water baptism, but there's also the Spirit that's involved here as well. Holy Spirit. Now, if we just jump a few hundred years ahead, the early church began to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. We told that in the second uh, reading. And so when, um, when the people went out proclaiming the gospel, right? Peter and John did that, and in the early church there was a lot of persecution particularly in Jerusalem, and so many of the believers scattered. They went into other areas of the region, sharing the good news of Jesus. And so the word of God was spread across Judea and Samaria by the people who had been baptized, but then sharing their faith in the other people. So we're told that when um, Peter and John arrived in Samaria, right, there was a little bit of a problem there. Let me just read it to you. It's in chapter 8 of the book of Acts. It says this, When Peter and John arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. For well, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. So here we have a situation where it's the Holy Spirit. The new believers have been baptized, but they haven't heard of the Holy Spirit. And when Peter and John laid hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit, they were all filled with the God's Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. Now, see how important that is. The church needs the Holy Spirit all the time, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit at all times. And so it's good for us to think about that. what happened in the early years of the church. Um, and I want to suggest that we go right back to the first day of the resurrection of the right? And what did he say there? Jesus said, he arrived after his resurrection in the upper room, you know that one, don't you? Where he went into the room and they um, were surprised to see him, of course, because he just risen from the dead. And Jesus says to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So they received the Holy Spirit then, on that first night. They received it when Jesus breathed on them. And in a sense, they were born again of the Spirit of God. So one would think that receiving the Holy Spirit on that first resurrection night would have been sufficient for these men to go out and minister. And we're told that Jesus said to them, wait, don't go straight away. This is what he says to them. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so here we have to uh, be baptized with the Holy Spirit being filled with our spirit and not the term we could use. So they had to use, they had to wait until that happened. Now John Baptist preached about the baptism of the Holy Spirit also, that's mentioned. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, we look through the scripture, is mentioned five times. Once by Jesus, and four times by all the gospel writers. For example, Mark says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's what Mark John was saying. Right? So what am I trying to say here? I'm saying that our baptism is very important. Don't get that wrong. But the empowering of the Holy Spirit is very significant. We need that 
all the time. And I think that some of my experience in the life of the church has been that we do need that fresh empowering of the Spirit of God on a regular basis. Like drinking a glass of water, right? When we're thirsty, so we drink it. When it runs out of the bottle, it has to be replenished for water. And we do our in life in this world, and it's a, a, a big thing in these days, spread the good news of Jesus. You know, the church has lost its favour in the sense that the community don't want to do with it. But we have to go out preaching the gospel. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So it's important for us to think about that. Uh, it's clear from the scriptures, then, that there's this two, two experiences tonight. The baptism of water, and the other one is baptism of the Spirit, or probably better term, being filled with the Spirit. There are the spirits, as I said in my life, that I had to keep asking God to fill me afresh with the spirit because I'm running out of energy. I'm running out of spiritual energy in the sense. Um, and we need constantly seeking the Lord, asking for his help in all sorts of ways. I read this the other day. Some have described the empowering of God's people for ministry. This is what the quote said. The Holy Spirit comes to live in us when we receive Jesus and are born again of the Spirit. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is the pouring out of the Spirit upon us. The fullness, the filling of it, filling the jar up to keep going down. So <clears throat> I guess that the message that I'm trying to make this morning is that I'm here to constantly ask God to Fill me afresh with the Spirit, so that I can go out witnessing, so I can go out just to, to, to give my life to Jesus. Um, and so to be fruitful ministers to Jesus in the kingdom of God, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need to be baptized, yes, but we need the empowering of God's Spirit. And so this morning, I'm going to suggest we have a couple of prayers here. You know, one prayer will be the most basic prayer is to help us live another fresh life for us. Who, who wants a fresh infilling of the Spirit for God? Yes, I do. So we're going to pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you gift us with your Son Jesus to be born again with you baptized into your church. Lord, we realize that we need more. We need what you said to be empowered, to be baptized with your spirit. And so we invite your Holy Spirit to come now and fill us afresh. Fill us afresh this morning, Lord, with your spirit, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. That will help us be big into your direction for our life. Empower us to be faithful ministers in the life of your church and in the community. And so we invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just spend a moment receiving that before we move on. Stand and <clears throat> let us together affirm the face of the church. We believe in one God, 
the Father and Almighty, made of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten of man, of one me with the Father, through him all things from man. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, but the incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son in worship and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer you. Pray, Lord, for your blessing upon our families and friends as we receive your spirit this morning. We pray for our friends. We ask you, Lord, to guide the nations of this world with your wisdom and power so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land the spirit of unselfishness, compassion, and fairness in public and private life. Father, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, Lord Jesus. I think we pray here for the Anglican Church in Corporal Park, where we remember them. We pray for the vacancy that we're looking for a new leader. Pray for your guidance, Lord, as we search, your wisdom to people who are discerning who, who to be the next leader, for our bishop and for the parish nominators. So send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister <coughs> among us to commend your faith your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Father, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who are in need today, people that we know. Just spend a moment quietly naming one or two people that's on your mind and need God's help, and then give that person to the Lord. We commend, Lord, to your fatherly care those people we've named in their hearts. You've heard their names. We commend to your fatherly care all those people and others who we don't know who are in sorrow, or sickness, or discouragement, or any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who care for them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. Father, hear our prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for the faithful service of the Pope. Particularly thank you for Sue Trent Fisher, who recently has gone in your heaven with you, Lord. 
and others that we know. We give you thanks for that, Lord. And we praise you for all your servants whose lives have honored Christ. Encourage us by their example so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We ask you, Lord, to accept our prayers as we offer the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours. Amen. stand and share God's peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We've got a little swag in this Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Got another hymn we can play now, bro.
years in Thanksgiving number one. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Satan in my heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Satan in my heart. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us before your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power, and yours forever and ever.
Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to them and the Son of God. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Please stay up for tea or coffee, but probably open the cafe just for us because we don't have soup kitchen, so. You can stay, you can stay back again.